The Web of Gold. One of the strangest countries in the world is India. Amazing are some of the customs of her various principalities, ruled by Maharajas who have the power of life and death over their subjects and whose wealth is fabulous. In Hyderabad, one of the states of India, the Nizam is entertaining a party from Europe. In the great hall, the guests are seated on chairs of priceless workmanship. While on a raised throne sits the Nizam himself, his hands covered with emeralds, diamonds, and rubies. Tell me more about your lovely city, monsieur. Ah, oh, Paris is sublime, your highness. Oh, Paris could never compare with Vienna, my dear Paul, never. Paris? Vienna? Why, they can't compare to this, your highness. No? Why, even the servants wear turbans at the sapphires. It's like the Arabian night. Yes. Uh, my palace is perfect, as perfect as I can make it, but I'm tired of palaces. Tired of this place? Why, I don't see how One others... becomes surfeited, madam. Why, look at that fountain playing out there in the moonlight, just like a shower of diamonds. Uh, madam Cynthia likes diamonds in common with her sex. Oh, yeah, Cynthia likes diamonds. Take this ring, uh, please. Oh, but your highness, I can't... To remember Hyderabad. Why, but... It's worth thousands. It's worth is nothing to me, madame. Oh, but why, your highness? The Golconda diamond mines belong to me. Oh, but your highness... I am sure you're becoming bored. Suppose we watch Galantha dance for a moment. She is worth more to me than all the diamonds in the world at present. She not beautiful? Beautiful, beautiful. I envy you, your hands. Yes, at least she is a new face, a new sensation. Tell me something, your highness. What is it you wish to know? Why are you so unhappy? With everything in the world, I don't see why you can't go on and on, seeing new places, new people. Hyderabad is a small country, madam. And one so soon is tired of, uh, people. But surely you could leave the government to others What who... would be the good? I would have nothing to do then. You see, my dear, I cannot leave my country. Cannot leave your country? Why? Why? It is written. The Nizam's life is sacred to his people. Ah. Uh, Kalantha, dance again. <laughs> Strange as it seems, the Nizam of Hyderabad, the richest man in the world, who spent $1,200,000 on brides for his two sons, who gave 50 millions to Great Britain during the war, whose fortune is estimated at over $2 billion, is a prisoner in his own country, doomed never to cross its boundaries. And he has 300 wives. Uncle Sam's oddest mail carrier. Here you are at Lake Zurich, a little town in the northern part of Illinois. And here comes the most interesting man in town. For 30 years, he has been taking the same walk each morning. Hello, Bert. <laughs> You're right on time as usual. Thanks, Bert. I envy you, postman, on a day like this. <laughs> yes, fine weather, Frank. Next is for Knowles. They're new folks. They must have moved in yesterday. This house has been vacant for three months. <laughs> well. Does Miss Edith Knowles live here? I'm Miss Knowles. Well, I'm Bert Sipe, the, the postman. I like to get acquainted with everybody. Here's your mail. Oh, dear. 
Just a mail order catalog, and, and I was hoping for a letter. <laughs> You'll hear from him tomorrow. Well, he'll hear from me if I don't. Oh, well, have you been delivering the mail here very long? For 30 years, miss. Never made a mistake either, if I do say so myself. Well, pretty soon you'll be able to retire, and, and I bet you won't be sorry. Oh, no, ma'am. A postman gets around a lot. I've gotten to be one of them uh, psychologists. Well, I never. <laughs> well, it's been nice to talk to you, uh, Mr. Uh... Uh, Sipes, the name. Bert Sipes. Oh, by the way, Mr. Sipes, uh, would you mind mailing this letter for me? Well, if you don't mind. <laughs> Sorry, miss. Uh, you'll have to put it in my hand. I'm blind. Oh, I'm so sorry. No need for that, miss. But but I don't see how you know about... Well, well I don't see how you can... You mean about the numbers of the houses and the letters? Yes. Well, perfectly simple. The postmaster sorts out the mail and tells me where each one is to go. And I, I keep different bunches in different pockets. See? How wonderful. Oh, Mr. Sipe. I do hope we'll be friends. Well, I know we will, miss. Well, I, I got to be going along. Goodbye, miss. Goodbye. Strange as it seems, Bert Sipe, the blind postman, never makes a mistake with his mail. Though he has not been able to see for 55 years. His chief diversion, by the way, is radio. The man who set the world afire. Serbia, June 28, 1914. In Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia, a celebration is in progress. The streets are festooned with bunting. The sidewalks and curbs are crowded with many makers, waiting for the parade. Can you see, Ella? Yes, but Otto cannot. Lift him up, Carl. It isn't often that any of us can see an archduke. Well, come, Otto, hold on to Father's shoulder. There, can you see now? Yes, Father. Oh, Carl, he asks if we look like one of the Habsburgs. <laughs> God forbid, if you are the Habsburg nose, <laughs> no, I like you better the way you are, Anna. <laughs> Can you see, darling? Yeah, Mother. Oh, there isn't anybody coming yet, Mother. Oh, I like a circus better. <laughs> Someone will hear you. Listen to that, child. He likes to see an elephant better than a Habsburg. And so would I. And so would I. <laughs> <laughs> it's better not to say such things. <laughs> uh, will your princess? I am not afraid. I'm not a slave of the Habsburgs. I'd rather be a live slave than a dead hero. Never. Pardon me. My name is Gabrilo Princeps. I should like to shake hands with a boy who does not like the Habsburgs. It's better not to speak too loud. I am not afraid. I think of my country first. Always. Look, Anna, here comes the escort. Can you see, Anna? Yes, a little. Look, the Archduke is bowing to everyone. And isn't his wife pretty? What's the Archduke's name, Mother? Ferdinand. The Archduke Ferdinand. And his wife is named Snoopy. She is the Countess of Hohenberg. Oh, you bad boy. Look, the Archduke speaks to the coachman. The coachman is coming this way. Oh, Carl, what will they do? Oh, never mind, Anna. Oh, please, sir. The boy meant no harm. Oh, Madam, allow me. The Countess wishes to give her loyal subject a token. Young man, here is a coin from Countess Hunter. Don't live, Sabia!
strange as it seems, a real old princeps who assassinated Archduke Ferdinand and started the World War died a natural and peaceful death in a fortress near Prague. This 18-year-old student, who indirectly caused 37,500,000 casualties, has a monument erected to his honor at Sarajevo. He is considered a patriot in Serbia.